Hi, it's Kaylee from Crochet Unraveled, and in this video, I wanted to teach you the top five tools that you need to get started crocheting. Whether you've already been crocheting and you're not sure exactly what you need to buy at the store, or if you're brand new and looking to begin, I can tell you exactly what you need to buy and where you need to get it from. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. Number one on the list of five things you absolutely need for crocheting is, of course, yarn. And here I have a medium weight acrylic yarn, and I suggest you start with at least a medium weight. You can go even heavier, something like this, when you're just learning. And the reason for that is because it's going to just be easier to see your stitches when the yarn is thicker. And that way you'll really be able to understand which part of the stitch is which and what exactly you are supposed to be doing. But feel free to just buy a cheap skein of yarn, something like this, when you're just beginning because you will want something that you can practice with and you won't care if it's really <laughs> nice and expensive yarn. Hold on, let me get something else really quick. Now something like this is really nice hand-dyed yarn that my grandma actually bought for me in Seattle. And this, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but something like this I would wait to purchase or just wait to use until you feel a little bit more confident with your crocheting and you feel like you are making some pretty things. Number two, on the list of what you need to crochet is at least one hook. Now these hooks, um, you can just have one and make sure that it's the right size for your yarn or the project that you're crocheting, or these come in full sets of all different sizes, and you will see the size of the hook is indicated here. So this is a K hook. I'm not exactly sure what the 101 slash 2 means, but typically your hook will be, or your hook size will be indicated by a letter. So in this case it's K, and then a millimeter size. So this one is six and a half millimeters. And the millimeter is going to be <laughs> the best thing to go off of because millimeters are always the same and sometimes the letters can change or there's there are other things like that. So just pay attention to the millimeter size or you can always print out a chart that tells you, okay, K is six and a half millimeters or whatever the case may be. But these hooks, they come in a huge range of sizes. Let's see if I can show you. This one, teeny tiny, three and a half millimeters. They even go down further. And those are typically just silver um, made out of steel crochet hooks. And those are used usually to crochet with something like thread, really thin to make little doilies, or there are tons of things that you can do with thin thread. But there's tiny, tiny crochet hooks like this, and then you have bigger ones, and then there are even bigger crochet hooks than that. Big fat ones, because I'm not sure if you have seen, but some yarn gets to be, <laughs> you know, that big around. So it's good to have options, but if you want to stay with the budget-friendly route, just go ahead and buy the one hook that you need for your project. Okay, the next thing that you need to crochet is some type of scissors or trimmers. I like these because you just press them together and they snip. They're really, really sharp and they do a good job, but you could also use, oops, but you could also use something like this, just a little pair of scissors. And all you're going to be doing with this is just cutting the yarn at the end or when you're changing colors, 
you're going to want some way to just cut the yarn. Straightforward. <laughs> All right, the next thing you're going to need is a tapestry needle or a needle with a fat enough eye to fit your yarn through. And what you're going to be doing with this is weaving in the ends of your crochet projects. So when you crochet, you're going to start with a little tail at the end of your, or at the beginning of your project, and then you're going to tie off at the end, and you're going to snip that yarn, but you're going to leave a good sized tail. And what you're going to do with that tail is thread your needle, and then you're going to weave that end into your project so you can't see those ends anymore and they aren't just sticking out and flopping around. It makes it look much nicer and clean and finished. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure that you go and check out my video on how to weave in your ends. I demonstrate a really, really nice way to do it to make sure that your ends don't come undone and that your project just looks really, really nice and finished. All right, the fifth thing you absolutely need to crochet is a flexible tape measure. Now mine broke, I just have a normal tape measure here, which you can use, but what I mean by a flexible tape measure is usually they're about this big around, and there's something that your tailor will use, or if you um, are into sewing, they're just little tiny things, and the ribbon of I just forgot the word tape measure and the ribbon of the tape measure is only about that wide and it's flexible so you can if you are crocheting something that is circular or something that just isn't straight then you can use that and go around and make sure that you have the right width or the right measurement okay and then here is one bonus item that if you really do start getting into crocheting I suggest that you get yourself some stitch markers. And there are a few different kinds. So these are just basic. You can also use safety pins <laughs> because that's basically what this is. And what you will use these for is to indicate parts of your project that you want to remember. Say you're having a hard time keeping track of how many rows that you've crocheted. Okay, well you put a stitch marker every fifth row, for example. Um, another thing that I like to use it for is if I am in the middle of a crochet project and I set it down for the day, I will put a stitch marker in the loop that I'm crocheting from so it doesn't come undone and you know I've had it where one of my dogs will grab the yarn and go running with it and there goes my project it just unravels so um, that's a good use for these guys as well another type of stitch marker is just this one it's kind of cool and fancy and this will count your stitches or your rows sorry so you can just every time you start a new row just click up one, one new number, and that will help you keep track of where you are. Um, there are tons and tons of different types of stitch markers. If you look on Etsy or different crochet websites, they have really cute ones that you can buy too. But I just love these little guys, and somehow they're kind of like hair ties. They always get lost, <laughs> so it's good to have a bunch of these on hand. Alright, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it helped you gain some clarity on the tools that you will need to be a successful crocheter. If you liked this video and if it helped you out, make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more crochet related videos. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!